let me see what we have next. <laughs> I think it's something with pins. <laughs> <laughs> what are you reading? Yeah. Words. <clears throat> Words. <laughs> Words. Oh my god. Words. Adams. Adam Lee. <laughs> Adamowski. Adamson, Adler, Anderson, Anderson, here, Bueller, 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 Bueller. My best friend's sister's boyfriend's brother's girlfriend saw Ferris pass out of 31 flavors last night. I guess it's pretty <laughs> Thank you, Simone. <laughs> Never mind, I'm going to go ahead. Leave home, Gutterman, Apple White, Gutterman, and Black. Do you want to talk to Mr. Gutterman? One moment, sir, I'll connect you. Whittacombe, Gutterman, Applewhite, Biverman, and Black. Oh, yes, Mr. Biverman. You'd like to talk to Mr. Applewhite? Oh, yes, sir. He's in. I'll connect you. Whittacombe, Gutterman, Applewhite, Biverman, and Black. Oh, yes. Long distance, how are you? Oh, yes, Mr. Biverman. Sorry, Mr. Whittacombe. Oh, Mr. Applewhite, what are you doing in that hole with Mr. Gutterman? <laughs> want to steal a dead, naked body. Yeah. Well, dear, there are people who, um... Oh. Oh. That's really tacky. <laughs> <laughs> How many husbands have you had? Mine or other women? Yours. Five. Or five? Yes. Husbands should be like Kleenex. Soft, strong, and disposable. <laughs> How many their deaths like a spider with flies? <laughs> really? Well, guess fucking what? I don't really fucking care. You want to fucking know why? Because I don't fucking live in the fucking world. I live in fucking New York City. So go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah. My, oh my. You're pretty ferocious with mom's concerned, aren't you? The rest of the time, you're just another good-looking, sweet-talking, charmoozing, fuck happy fellow with nothing to offer but some dialogue. Dialogue's cheap in Hollywood, then. Why don't you run outside and jerk yourself a suck? <laughs> <laughs> an accident, Dolores, can be an unhappy woman. <laughs> Sometimes you have to be a high-riding bitch to survive. <laughs> Sometimes being a bitch is all a woman has to hang on to. I was kind of seeing someone, an author. Oh, what happened? He committed suicide. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. It's all right, honestly, really. I didn't really like him very much. I was <laughs> after he committed suicide. <laughs> <laughs> How did he do it? He threw himself off the building. He couldn't even do that properly. He only had three <coughs> stories. He would have survived. Only a car ran over him. <laughs> it is slightly funny, Maggie. I suppose so. Yes, it's slightly funny. Well, what kind of books did he write? Self-help. <laughs> more inconvenient than an old queen with a head cold. <laughs> How do you pick up the threads of an old life? How do you go on when in your heart you begin to understand? There is no going back. There are some things that time cannot mend. Some hurts that go too deep that have taken hold. Oh, that's probably the cook. Come in. Darling, the poor Miss Stone Deaf. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. Come in! <laughs> <laughs> Why? Are you wearing a mask? Were you burned by acid or something like that? Supermodels. Ha! Nothing super about them. Spoiled, stupid little stick figures with poofy lips who think only about themselves. I used to design for gods. Yeah. Up there, Nora, look. A blind butler. Don't let him park the car, please. <laughs> Two hundred and twenty-seven.
27 Leons. 227 performances of King Lear, and I can't remember the first line. <laughs> now you got a lot of money, Lee. What you gonna do? <laughs> I tell you what to do. Take April to the town. Buy her nice clothes. Check into the big hotel. Have lots of sex. Have <laughs> food. <laughs> We're out to you with that drink. Money, <laughs> champagne, and whiskey. Now, money all gone. April be gone too, like money. <laughs> You come back to me. I put you in kitchen, wash dishes to pay back loan. But by that time, you no longer young. <laughs> you no longer handsome. You be nothing but a dishwasher. Yeah. <laughs> That's one choice. There are others. Some say education good. Mm, I heard that. Me, personally, I hope you go with April. I can always use a good dish. <laughs> <laughs> Select, I don't know, that lumpy blue sweater, for instance, because you're trying to tell the world that you take yourself too seriously to care about what you put on your back. But what you don't know is that that sweater is not just blue, it's not turquoise, it's not lapis, it's actually cerulean. And you're also blithely aware of the fact that in 2002, Oscar de la Renta did a collection of cerulean gowns, and then I think it was Yves Saint Laurent, wasn't it, who uh, showed cerulean military jackets? I think we need a jacket here. <laughs> <laughs> Cerulean quickly showed up in the collections of eight different designers, and then it uh, filtered down through the department stores, and then trickled on down into some tragic casual corner where you, no doubt, fished it out of some clearance bin. However, that blue represents millions of dollars and countless jobs, and it's sort of comical how you think that you've made a choice that exempts you from the fashion industry when, in fact, you're wearing the sweater that was selected for you by the people in this room from a pile of stuff. Woo! You take what you learn from this life and you use it the next? That's karma. Ah, I thought karma was I do something bad in this life and then I'm a termite the next. Hey, if you ask me, pal, you're already a termite in this life and a shitty suit, okay? <laughs> Hamlet isn't just Hamlet. Oh, no, no, no. Hamlet is me. Hamlet is Bosnia. Hamlet is... This death. Hamlet is the heir. Hamlet is my grandmother. Hamlet is everything you ever thought about sex, about geology. Geology? In a very loose sense. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, I was running. Dashing through the side door, stumbling downstairs into the street, into the cold night, gasping for life. What? What is this? Tell me, signore, what is this pain? What is this need in this sound? Forever unfulfilled. Yet fulfilling him who hears it utterly. Is it your need? Can it be yours? Dimly the music sounded from the salon above. Dimly the stars shone down onto the street. I was suddenly frightened. It seemed to me that I had heard a voice of God, and that it issued from a creature whose own voice I had also heard. And it was the voice of an obscene child. Who wanted a girl to sit on their face? <laughs> Oh, my boob shirt. 
shirts. <laughs> Harvey and I <laughs> sit in bars, have a drink or two, play the jukebox, and soon the faces of all the other people, they turn towards me, and they smile, and they're saying, we don't know your name, mister, but you're a real nice fella. Harvey and I, we warm ourselves in all these golden moments. God, we, we, we've entered as strangers. Soon we have friends. And they come over. <laughs> they sit with us, they drink with us, and they talk with us. God, they tell us about these big, terrible things they've done and the big, wonderful things that they're going to do. Their hopes, their regrets, their loves, their hates, all very large. Because nobody ever brings anything small into a bar. Mm -hmm. Then I introduce them to Harvey. <laughs> And he is bigger and grander than anything they offer me. And when they leave, they leave impressed. The same people, they seldom come back, but that's envy, my dear. There's a little bit of envy in the best of us. you in the triple digits. What word do you think I didn't understand? Okay, just wanted to make sure you understood. Are you wearing black underwear? Yes. Want to meet me for a drink later? Kiss my squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> now, there, there's a magnificence in you, Tracy. A magnificence that comes out of your eyes, your voice, and the way you stand there. <laughs> And the way you walk, <laughs> your lip from within, Tracy. You've got fires back down in you. High fires. Holocaust. We're free. Yeah! Just free. Look, I've got one job on this last <laughs> ship. It's stupid, but I'm gonna do it. Yeah! Let's get out of here one of those things kills God. This episode was bad. Whoever well, they teach you to talk like this, that's a Panama City sailor on a hump off bar. With this getaway day and your last shot at his whiskey, sell crazy someplace else. We're all stopped up here. Hi, I'm Laurie Craven and I'm an actress. An actress? Really? How nice of you. I'm Betsy Faye Sherry and I'm a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you, Dan? Here. Oh. What time is it? Now. What are you? This moment. No, there's more. You see? <laughs> when the left tire mark goes up on the curb and the right tire mark stays flat and even, well, the 64 Skylock had a solid rear axle. So when the left tire would go up on the curb, the right tire would tilt up and right along its edge. But that didn't happen here. The tire mark stayed flat and even. This car had an independent rear suspension. Now, in the 60s, there were only two other cars made in America that had cars of traction and independent rear suspension and enough power to make these marks. One was the Corvette, which could never be confused. <laughs> as the 64 Skylark, and that was the 1963 Pontiac Tempest. Yeah! <laughs> 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 I think if God is dead, he's laughed himself to hell. Because you see, we live in Eden. Genesis has got it wrong. We've never left the garden. Look about you. This is paradise. 
He that shall live this day and see old age will yearly on the vigil feast his neighbors and say tomorrow was St. Crispian. Then will he strip his sleeve and show his scars and say, These wounds I had on Crispin's day. Old men forget, yet all shall be forgot, but he'll remember with advantages what feats he did that day. Then shall our names, familiar in his mouth as household words, Harry the King, Bedford and Exeter, Warwick and Talbot, Salisbury and Dwyer, be in their floating cups <laughs> and freshly remembered. This story shall the good man teach his son, and Crisp and Crispian shall ne'er go by from this day to the ending of the world, but we in it shall be remembering. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers, for he today that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother, be he ne'er so vile, this day shall gentle his condition. And gentlemen in England now obey shall think themselves accursed, they were not here, and hold their men whose chief blows any speaks that fought with us upon St. Crispin's Day! <laughs> Well, why shouldn't it be your annoying traits to get on my nerves? And I, and, and I know that I'm no day at the beach, but I do have a good sense of direction, so I can at least find the beach. <laughs> Which is not a weakness of yours, it is a strength of mine, okay? And, and God, you're a good friend, and, 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 and good friends are hard to find. You, 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 Charlotte said that in Charlotte's Web, and I love when you give that to Aaron, and you take on the voice of Wilbur the Pig, even when you're bone weary. And, 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 and doesn't that speak volumes about character? I mean, isn't that what we've come down to, you know? Uh, the, uh, what a person is made of, this the girl in the pith helmet, she's still in here. Bee, boo, bee, boo. And I didn't know that she existed until you. And, and I'm afraid uh, that, that if you leave, I, I may never see her again. Even though I said at times that you beat her out of me. Isn't that a paradox? I mean, haven't we hit the essential paradox? You know, give and take, push and pull, yin and yang. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. I, 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 I think Dickens said it best. He could eat no fat, wife eat no lean. That doesn't really apply here. What I'm trying to say is I'm saying to have funds because I love you. Aww. Aww. You've got to leave. Go down to a stuffy dressing room and smear paint on your face and go out on the stage and speak a lot of fool lines. And you love it. You couldn't live without it. Do you suppose I could have stood these two years? hobbling around with this thing if I had known I was going back to it. Every night when I'm sitting here alone, I'm really down there at the theater, 7.30, and they're going in and the stage door, evening to the doorman, taking down their keys and looking in the mail rack. Eight o'clock, the stage hands are setting up. Half hour, Miss Cavendish, grease paint, rouge, mascara. Fifteen minutes, Miss Cavendish. My costumes. Oh, Warwood, where is my rabbit's foot? Oh, Witcher. How's the house tonight? The curtains are props. Cue enter. That's all that kept me alive these two years. If you weren't down there for me, I wouldn't want to live. I, I couldn't live. You, down there, for me, going on, going on, going on. Grow old along with me. The best is yet to be. You take everything, the rose and the laurel too. Take them and welcome. But in spite of you, there is one thing that goes with me when tonight I enter my final lodging, sweeping the bright stars from the blue threshold with my salute, a thing unstained, unsullied by the brute, broken nails of the world, by death, by doom unfingered. A white plume over the battle, a diamond in the ash of the ultimate combustion. My pen. Excuse me. Aren't you Marjorie Lee Wigger? <laughs> <laughs> ah! World. Why, yes, I am. I'm Julia Sugarbaker. Woo! <laughs> sister. I couldn't help overhearing part of your conversation. Well, I'm sorry I didn't know anyone was there. Yes, and I gather from your comments there are a couple of other things you didn't know, Marjorie. For example, you probably didn't know that Suzanne was the only contestant in Georgia pageant history to sweep every category except in geniality. And that is not something. <laughs>
everything the women in my family aspire to anyway. <laughs> or that when she walked down the runway in her swimsuit, five contestants quit on the spot. Or that when she emerged from the isolation booth to answer the question, what would you do to prevent war? She spoke so eloquently of patriotism, battlefields, and diamond tiaras, grown men wept. And you probably didn't know, Marjorie, Suzanne was not just any Miss Georgia, she was the Miss Georgia. She didn't twirl just a baton. That baton was on fire. And when she threw that baton into the air, it flew high, firm, faster than any baton has ever flown before. Hitting a transformer and showering the darkened arena with sparks. And when it finally did come down, Marjorie, my sister caught that baton. And 12,000 people jumped to their feet, and for 16 and one half minutes of uninterrupted Thunderous ovation as flames illuminated her tear-stained face. And that, Marjorie, just so you will know, and your children will someday know, is the, the night the lights went out in Georgia.